Uh, thank you so much, Andy, for, for joining us. Big thank you, first of all, to, to Trulia for sponsoring this series on crypto exchanges. And we're, we're very excited and lucky to be joined here by Andy Lian, who is the chairman of the, the Big One Exchange. And, and they offer a multitude of, of ways for people to get involved in, 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 in crypto from simple in investment through to, to loans and, and, and everything else. So Andy's uh, here to, to, to talk about the different trading and investment strategies that exist in crypto and ways that people uh, can and are getting involved. So it's, it's important to mention, first of all, that this is not financial ad advice. Andy is not a financial advisor. He's, he is merely going to be sharing some of the, the different ways that people do get involved and some of the trends that we see in his space and what his own thoughts are it, regarding uh, both uh, individuals and institutions getting involved into crypto to hope, hopefully show what the potential opportunities are in the space and, and also some of the risks about some of the different ways of, of getting involved in crypto. So Andy, thank you so much, first of all, for joining us. Good to see you. It's my and, pleasure. Well, thank, thank you, thank you. And, and firstly, what would be really helpful is if you could give an overview of, of all of the different ways and uh, that people can get involved in, in crypto and, and, and some of the, the different ways offered on, on, on the Big One Exchange. Uh, firstly, looking at, at individuals, but then also for institutions to, to get into crypto. And, and we're seeing a, a push towards that. Sure, no problem. I think I think um, based on on the exchange, you know, we have uh, we have our our spot trading desk. We have uh, our derivative desk. We have uh, another sector that is uh, looking at some of these um, uh, ETFs as well on on uh, on our platform. So we we we, we are a, a Netherlands based uh, uh, crypto exchange. You know, we have uh, registered entities in seashells and we operate in in the many parts of the world you know so so our our products are, are mainly driven by a lot of the uh, spot trading you know the all the, the main coins that, that that we all know from uh, bitcoin to ethereum you know to uh, polka dot to eos that that's one kind of the coins you know then after which we have uh, the L coins, you know, so we have like uh, today's, I think, uh, hot topic, you know, would be uh, SHIB, you know, Shiba, Shiba Inu, uh, <laughs> coins like that, that are, are very much uh, 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 happening and very much hype, hype up in the market, you know, so we have that kind of uh, L coin as well, new L coins, new startup coins. And then we have uh, derivatives trading, you know, we, we are not the most uh, adventurous um, uh, crypto exchange, you know, we are rather con conservative, you know, um, our derivatives trading uh, and, and our leverage options are all fairly um, uh, low in risk, you know, so, so, so that's how mainly uh, the crypto exchange has been run, you know. Um, for some exchanges, you know, they offer a uh, uh, fiat uh, transaction, you know, but for big one, we are only going for crypto to crypto kind of transaction, mm -hmm. you know, so we do not uh, touch on any kind of uh, fiat uh, exchange, uh, uh, exchanging into into crypto on the uh, Big One platform. So this is um, a, a quick summary of, of how Big One is like. Yeah. No, thank you. Uh, and you, you say it's it's relatively low risk, but but looking at some of the the offerings, futures, and and loans against crypto for, for example they're they're, they're not risk-free uh it, it's it's fair to say and and just out of interest in in your opinion what 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 draws people to these of course on the one side you've got the the potential for gains and and, and on the other side you've got the, the potential for risk and uh, and losses do you do you see any any trends in terms of what what type of people or users are being drawn to these products and strategies I think um, um, based on my knowledge, you know, um, it depends on the kind of coins that we are dealing, you know. So, so maybe, maybe let me just uh, try to make it more general, right? So for the younger generation, they tend to look at the newer coins, right? Coins that are, well, you, you couldn't even pronounce them, you know, 
or, or some of them, they, they, they are like a meme coin. You know, it, it is something not very serious, right? Because they felt, the younger generation felt that, you know, the coin price is low. You know, they, they could ape in or they could buy in. And then mm -hmm. the potential of growth is very high, right? Uh, are, are, they, are, they, are they of a high risk? Definitely of high risk, right? So this is one segment of people. The other segment will be more of the professional uh, investors. Uh, I, I would love to still call them professional investors. They know what they are getting themselves into. They know different kinds of option to buy, stop. You know, they know how the options are going to work. They know how the futures are going to work. Those guys uh, tend to go for um, things that are more stable. You know, like maybe a maybe a, a Bitcoin futures, for example. And then last but not least, there's another kind of guys who are totally, well, looking at, looking at the market, right? They, I would somehow call them like gamblers. You know, they, they, just, they, just, look at, they just look at the, the percentage, you know, they, they realize that, well, today, this coin has a, has, has a high, uh, high volume, for example, you know, and, and, and the, 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 the trends from the, from the charts are going up. You know, so so some of them they just 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 go all in, man. And then when I say low risk in the beginning, you know, of this whole conversation, um, I'm not ref referring it to just uh, uh, very product uh, specific. You know, uh, I pref I prefer to look at low risk in terms of if you know what you are going into, and you control your own risk. I think the risk is a lot lower than many other investment products in the market. You know. And jumping back to what I've or I've talked about for the for the for the gamblers, you know how they invest and so forth. Many of them go for high risk and high return. So so again, when I say low risk, we we uh, um, at big one, we do not have those super high leverage products, right? If you go to some other exchanges, they could give you a fifty x leverage or even a hundred x leverage. So in terms of risk level and risk profile, uh, some other exchanges are actually in the extreme end, you know. So so that's how that that's that's that that's also one of the reasons why I mentioned uh, low risk. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. And and I mean, you, you you touch on on the low risk side or, or relatively lower risk side of of course nothing is risk free and. In, in crypto, what what methods would you say if somebody is new to crypto and sort of cautious to get in? What what methods would you see to to mitigate as much risk as possible? Well, if if they are if they are new and they they still want to trade uh, in a crypto exchange, then my my very honest advice is one please please get yourself educated, you know, because um. Um, crypto has a lot of changes and not every investor are able to cope with the changes, right? Mm -hmm. So for, and, and let's say example, they, they think that they know it, you know, they are willing to take the risk. What I would suggest would be going for um, the more um, mainstream or the, the, the core, the core uh, crypto, the core cryptocurrency, you know, maybe going for Ethereum, Bitcoin, and not Shiba Bitcoin. Inu uh, token. Yes, yes, because because the risk profile is and and the trends are all fairly uh, available in the market, right? So if you are new, you know, and you are going to put in some serious money, Bitcoin, for example, or Ethereum, for example, would be a, a fairly good choice, right? And then and then for those who who came in with smaller money, smaller amount of money, um, I mean, relatively small, maybe $100 or $1,000, for example, they, they might want to go with the, 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 the other trend I've mentioned, you know, go for L coins, you know, go for coins that are really new and has a potential of growth, you know, because if you look at the coin cycle for new, new coins, it's, it's always steady, and then they will just spike up, right? Mm -hmm. so, so some of these new guys are actually looking at, at the spike, looking at the increase, and they hope to, to, to get a, a, a 2x return, for example, or 3x return, and then they will exit, and then they will go for the next coin. So, so these, these, are, these are two different profile 
and two different kind of uh, uh, maybe methodology, you know, behind uh, crypto buying, you know, for for new people, for new newcomers. That I that I would think that it would it would be more suitable, you know. Yeah, no, thank you. And and one of the big trends we're seeing now in in crypto is is the the institutional space you, you've got various or but, but you, you've got some of the larger companies which we've been seeing led for example by uh, by tesla by MicroStrategy, buying up bits of bitcoin but you've also got various different funds and institutionally led um funds and, and vehicles looking at getting into the crypto space and we're seeing some sort of tiptoeing tiptoeing their way in and, and others that are still sat sat, sat sort of in the, the back lines looking at, at crypto and, 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 you know, looking at maybe they should start to be getting a little bit, but they're still concerned about things like the safety, the custody, the, the, the volatility and so forth. So a, a few questions to you about the, the institutional side of investment going on. Obviously, there's a, a lot of people in the crypto space do, do believe that once the institutional money starts going in, then things will really ramp up and you know maybe the volatility will go down and and you know prices will go up maybe it's possible but on on the other hand it's that there's still various factors in crypto the 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 user experiences you know there are now some secure custody platforms and some some secure um platforms and so forth that that make crypto much safer that than it was a few years ago on 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 every every level um but what what do you think is is needed to see that that institutional drive and money going into crypto and and what do you think the institutions are are looking for in in crypto regarding sort of trading and investment strategies in in crypto i mean just one example i had a conversation with a fund manager yesterday and he's from the the traditional finance side and has run some some of the world's largest funds and you know the, the conversation was well we've traditional finance you can predict trends you can do research you can make more or less informed decisions and 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 with crypto currently you all you sometimes need is a one tweet from a a billionaire or one tweet from somebody who has a lot of followers and and that can massively affect the markets so how, how do you see the institutional investment in crypto going i i i think i think this um i think when yeah i mean based on my own uh, uh, perspective you know on things you know the uh, the stock market for example the traditional finance market and crypto market there's not much difference you know to be real honest it's just that the pace and the maybe the uh, the, the the whole impact is a lot bigger right well in the stock market someone put up a, a, a certain a certain tweak Tweet or, or a certain <laughs> message, you know, that, that could also cause some turbulence, you know. Mm -hmm. But of course, they might be they might be asked for for a long coffee session by by SEC, you know, to to ask uh, you know what is that message about because it's, it's mm -hmm. all regulated, right? Um, I think in time to come, uh, the crypto space uh, will be a lot more regulated and moving towards what you see in, in the traditional market. Um, by then. Uh, if you look at the flip side of things, you know, by then a lot of um, institutions will come in, 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 into place, you know, then the whole dynamics of the whole crypto market is going to change and it's going to bounce back to what you see in the, in the, in the traditional market right now. Is that a good thing for investor? Yes and no, because a lot of chances, a lot of good chances right now are, are, are open you know, to retail investors and to many other investors. Once the regulations kicks in, once the big institution comes in, once they know how to sort of play the game, then the market will be dominated by all the big banks again, right? All the big family offices, all the big financial institutions. Again, is that a good thing? Well, to me, I think it's good, but there's also a bad side of things, right? So so I think, I think we shouldn't be looking at um, at, at it in this manner and do the comparison in that. But, but, but coming back to the earlier point that you have mentioned about institutions coming in, about institutions getting themselves in, uh, 
uh, bigger corporations buying in into crypto and so forth. I think I think right now, you know, comparatively to two zero one eight, we we from the industry has increased uh, investment by a lot, you know, by 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 a lot of uh, from from family offices, from uh, corporates and so forth. Well, they, they they may not be putting up a news like what MicroStrategy is doing. You know, they are silently buying them. You know, because they felt that you know instead of just hedging against some traditional products, they are hedging against cryptocurrency. You know, this, this may not be in the news, but if you look at um, some, of, some of the reports that you can see uh, in some of these uh, cor big, bigger corporates, you know, they have actually put aside X amount of uh, dollars just for uh, crypto related investments. Uh, I see that in Asia, I see that in Europe, I see that in US, and it's all picking up, you know, they are all picking up the steam and buying different kind of uh, cryptocurrency. So, so um, again, you know, just, just want to emphasize the point is that if, if, we, if we think that the uh, institutions coming in right now is, is a good thing for us, then we really got to really got to think twice, is this, is this the right time for them to come in? Because right now it's still in a state where things are messy. Maybe government are still trying to cope with the regulations. Is it good for them to come in now and put a judgment uh, to say that, well, cryptocurrency is messy? I, I, I think it's too early, to be honest. I think now is a, is a period of time where smaller companies gather together, you know, try to find their way, man maneuver their way in the cryptocurrency space, try their very best to see and test out the whole system. You know, by doing that, you know, they become, or every one of us right now become like a tester, you know, to, 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 to see how uh, uh, this whole testing process is like. You know, from there, the reports can be fine-tuned uh, um, on the industry level. The government can step in to look at the pro and cons and fill up the gaps. Then at that point of time, you know, when the real big wheels, big institutional wheels come in, you know, things will be a lot more interesting. You know, that, that's, that's how I see, it. you know, just my two cents worth. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. I mean, you, you touched on regulation and it's, uh, you know, that, that's a, a, a slow process that I think is, is going more slowly than anyone probably would have thought. And, you know, we see practically some of the, the challenges for the regulators in, in, in looking at crypto. So that will, come but in, in in time and probably not tomorrow but um you know we, we've also touched on user experience i think it's, it's known that some of the, the user experience of some of the uh, crypto exchanges and, and and platforms isn't quite where it could be and probably where it will be in the, in the near future and you know we've seen lots of challenges of things like on and off ramping crypto companies just for example so what what else do you see needs to come in for, for crypto to be fully uh, ideal for, for, you know, for, for new investors, but also for, for institutional money, uh, you know, uh, aside from the, the regulation and, and ease of use. Do, do you see it as a, custody, as a custody thing, as a legal thing, as a, a clarity thing, as a risk thing, as a volatility thing? I, I, I do, to be very honest, you know, the, in terms of the custody, you know, of course, you know, people will talk about the custody, the clearance, you know, uh, you know, then they will, they will talk about the multi-sig wallet, you know, the hot, the hot and the, the hot and cold wallet, where they are stored and so forth. I, I think, I think th th those are not the things that are stopping uh, retail investors from coming, to be, to be very honest. Let, let's, let's segmentize this whole conversation, right? So when we talk about the um, centralized exchanges, I think the user experience are somewhat similar. You know, of course, there are some of the, maybe the top 50 in the world, they are all, they are the UI, the UX is mm -hmm. slightly better than those behind, you know, but in general, I felt that the centralized exchanges are fairly straightforward. You, you come out with a login, with your email, do your KYC, off you go, right? Um, the DEX, the DEXs, which, is the, which are the decentralized ones, mm -hmm. like Uniswap, Pancake swap and so forth. 
wow, I think I think the, the barrier to entry is a lot higher. You know, if you if you tell your friends, you know, um uh uh to use pancake salt, for example, on Binance, um <laughs> they will say, Hey man, how can I get some money in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so for example, uh you know, okay, for example, you know, someone someone solved the problem by transferring some BUSD to them, right? And then they say, okay, I'm going to buy this token, right? Mm -hmm. And then they realize that, hey, I can't buy it. There's yeah. a problem, you know? Then they realize that they need BNB, right? Because they need a gas fee, you know, on, on, on a pancake swap. Then after getting the BNB, then the next problem comes, man. Hey, what happened? I, I still can't buy it. Then there are other issues like slippage, you know? How much you have, what, what kind of percentage you're going to put it in, mm -hmm. you know? So there's a lot of different things that, that are in the, in the, in, in, in this DEXs that you need to cope, you know, compared to a uh, centralized exchanges, right? Yeah. Centralized exchange, um, if you go to some, um, some of the top few exchanges, you know, uh, and, and many exchanges actually offer a, like a, like a credit card solution, right? So you can straight away buy buy the um, the USDT, for example, off your credit card. Mm -hmm. Okay, perhaps you have to wait for a couple of days. You know, after you do your KYC and so forth. Yeah. Once you're done with that, the money goes in. You can just buy whatever you want, right? So 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 that whole user experience got to change. Centralized exchanges got to help them in terms of. Um, uh, transferring their money and converting them into fiat, uh, converting them into crypto. Same for a uh, same for a decentralized exchange. They need to find some ways to help their users cope with that kind of a problem. Mm -hmm. If they if they can't cope with all these problems, there's no way any users will find that this is real comfortable, mm -hmm. right? So this is more from a trading perspective. Whether they are retail investor or institution investors or corporate investors, they all face the same problem, right? But if you look at the corporates or, or, or VCs, for example, or angel investors or, or corporate investors, there, there are other things that they can do, right? They can actually invest into the project, you know, invest in equity, for example, you know. So that is also another uh, a process that, you know, investors can take part in the whole, uh, you know, crypto investing kind of uh, uh, space. So, so, so I think I think again, you know, for those who get 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 used to the whole interface, I think, I think, I think, I think we can fairly adapt it very well, you mm -hmm. know. But for the new ones, trust me, it, it is really not easy. That's that's perhaps one of the reason why there's a lot of different clubs, you know, different um, uh, groups, you know, online uh, that are trying to educate, mm -hmm. trying to teach newcomers how they should trade, you know. So, yeah, that's how I see it. Yeah, no, amazing. Well, thank you so much. And, and it's such a big great space. And I think what's what's important to add in crypto is it's moving so fast. It's it's not static. We've got so many of the brightest minds going to, to work in crypto companies that I think it is just a matter of time until a lot of these issues are just addressed and, you know, give it maybe five years, we'll be, uh, you know, looking back and, and thinking how, how difficult crypto was back then. But no, Andy, thank you so much for, for joining us. Really grateful for, for your time and your insights and your views. So thank you very much for, uh, for joining us. And, and big thank you also to, to Trilayer for sponsoring this crypto exchange series. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. See you, see you soon. Bye. Bye.